was in the neighborhood today, and I thought I'd stop by to see what Farmer Bob was doing. Hi, Farmer Bob. Thank you for coming by. I just was going out to the greenhouse to do some planting. Come on, follow me. Okay, we're going to uh, do some planting, a tomato and okra, and we're also going to do some seeds. Come on, let's go into the actual garden itself. Before we start, we have some tools. Uh, I have some gloves that I picked up at the dollar store. And I also have a knee pad, which came from the dollar store. And a hand tool from the dollar store. But uh, you, you get what you pay for. This is not a very good one, and I would not recommend you getting tools from the dollar store. I have other stuff here that came from more serious endeavors, places of business. Uh, these two cultivators. This one on my right is for doing light work, and this one uh, on my left is doing for heavier cultivating. Okay, let's go and see what kind of trouble we could get into. Okay, the first thing I want to do is plant one of these tomato seedlings that I started from seed. Let me move this cage. Aerate the soil a little bit. See the soil? This is nice. This is several years of composting and turning stuff over. It's very aerable, very light. You can't pack that too hard or too tight because the roots are very sensitive. There we go. Let me just put this. It's okay to bury these tomatoes a little bit on the deep side because it's good for the roots. And here I'll put this makeshift cage up. It's good support for the tomatoes and uh, it discourages critters. The fence in the background, uh, I have a second fence for security because those critters are very enterprising. I'm gonna come with a pitchfork. Okay, before I put the okra in, I just want to turn the soil up a little bit, okay? That's nice. Okay, now let me get the hand tool and get rid of some of these weeds. Okay, now I'm going to aerate the soil and get rid of these weeds because I don't want them growing back. more worms you have, it means the better shape your soil is in. And the better shape the soil, the more uh, you're able to harvest from a crop. The weeds go in one bucket and the stones go in the other one because the stones are not very good for retaining moisture. See, I'm, I'm using both ends of this uh, this hand tool, and this one is is one of the best and most used tools that I have. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Ah, look at that. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay. Now we're going to put in some okra. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous plant. If you didn't know it was a plant to eat food with, you would think it's a gorgeous flower. I would 
like to put them outside in front of the house, but the critters really like chewing on this. So that's why it's here and in a, in a caged area. Once again, the spoon. And you'll notice, theoretically, this is supposed to be a four pack, but uh, if you snoop around carefully, you'll find even more than four in a pack. And this one has six of them in there, so I almost doubled my money. Here, let me split this now, okay? Very gently. Here you go, here you go. And these were watered before planting this, this afternoon. So the roots are nice and wet. It lessens the stress on the plant itself. Here we go. Dig a hole in our soil. It goes in. And here you go. Look at that. And we'll do likewise for Junior here. Ha. This is not a mistake because you know what? You can't make mistakes doing this. Uh, Mother Nature is very forgiving of a lot of faux pas or bumps in the road. And this is one of them. Here we go. And not too tight on the roots, but just enough. And there you go. The packet comes with a little sign. It says okra. And I'll put it right here. Before I plant some seeds, I want to go to the compost bin and get some, some soil, some real good soil that's been aging for about a year to till in with the, with the ground over there, which isn't too good yet, okay? Come on, follow me. Oh, look at that soil. Oh boy, is that good. Some people do it in three or six months, but a year I, I find is much preferable to me. It has almost the consistency of peat moss, maybe. In these bins, I put grass clippings. I also put uh, leaves, but uh, don't put meat in it, bones, pine needles, or leaves from oak trees because they'll turn the compost bitter and sour. Okay, let's go now to the garden and see what we can do. I'm over here on the north end of the garden and this is the latest part to be expanded and the soil here is not the best that's why i'm doing the compost on this let me turn this over okay and let me get the hand tool now and just work this in to the other side. Okay, that's good. Now, we're going to sow perpetual spinach here. Perpetual spinach uh, tastes just like spinach, but it, uh, you can harvest it all summer. So if you like that spinach taste, uh, you don't have to say goodbye to that taste. Now let me just lightly cover the seeds. We did that. Now, one more thing. I'll be right back. If you've ever been walking in your neighborhood, you've probably seen these in the street, in the gutter. Uh, 
they're the, the leftover work from gardeners uh, or lawn maintenance people. And it says, this area has been treated, keep away. These things make excellent markers for what you planted. So what you do is this. And there you go. Uh, I have a marker. Now I don't have to worry about remembering where I planted. And you know something? You will forget unless you put a marker up. And the more you cut it, the more vigorously it grows. So you're going to have it all summer, that great spinach taste. And you may have noticed that there are brick walkways that divides the garden into rectangular spots. That serves two purposes. One, it prevents me from uh, compacting the soil uh, when I walk on it. And secondly, it marks, marks areas where I planted stuff last year and I don't want to, the same stuff in there this year. The example is potatoes and tomatoes. You really want to rotate the areas so you don't deplete the soil or get a disease. Okay. During this time of the year and in October, we see these signs up along the road and highway saying, uh, Ed for freeholder, Meredith for mayor. And in November, these signs are just there, nobody picks them up. But here, these things make great, great support columns for things like beans and tomatoes. And you know something? They're more durable than what you get at, get at the And you can't beat the price, it's free. So here, here's what I do with that. You have these twisties. One, two, twist them up, and there you go. You have a makeshift cage. Some some of these things you just can't uh, you just can't go from packets like this. Uh, you have to go from seeds because you'll have no luck and it just will cost you an arm and a leg. Things like onions come in sets, a box set for a hundred for three dollars. Uh, that's 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 pretty pretty doable. You notice the compost uh, uh, the composter in the back. I got this from Somerset County, and when you get the composter, you get one of these uh, that, that tells you what to look for, what not to do, where can you, and when it's going to be ready, and, and everything else. But the composter is a great and inexpensive way to get nitrogen into your farm or your garden. And lastly, uh, you only you will be able to use this maybe once a year. This is a pH meter. What you do is stick this in the ground, hit the button, and there's a digital readout, and it tells you if your soil is acidic or base alkaline. And if you plant, you can harvest. And uh, let me conclude just by harvesting some of the spinach that's been in the ground for a while. Although I have an eight foot fence up, I have these little cages around the spinach because, you know, the critters here are very enterprising. So here, let me do my salad for tonight. Spinach. Spinach, spinach, put this back. And a little bit of arugula. There's one right here. Try to reach over it, get it out without squishing anything. Okay, I got that. And I just noticed asparagus is up, the first one of the year. Uh, asparagus, once you plant it, don't ever think about moving it because it'll be there for 25 to 30 years. They don't transplant easy. Once it's there, it's there. Here we go. Here we go. Can't beat home cooking. <laughs> Thank you for visiting. If you have any questions, uh, the two best places to ask are your county agricultural agent or your local library. And both uh, agencies will be very happy to assist you uh, in any of your questions. 
because sometimes things could get a little rocky, uh, sometimes, but not all the time. Until then, happy harvest and thank you for visiting. Bye bye. Shade PC. to eat. Do you have a fresh asparagus? It's absolutely different.